Butler. I'm director of the music degree program here at Caldwell Community College. Uh, and this is our first concert of the spring semester performing artist concert series. Uh, very excited to have the Onyx Club boys. Uh, maybe they'll get into that name and, and how that name kind of fits in with this genre um, of the hot club style, uh, manouche jazz, uh, sometimes referred to as uh, gypsy jazz as well. Uh, I do want to remind everybody to uh, think I think they're ready to rock. <laughs>
great to be here. So, I'm, uh, my name's Gabriel, this is, uh, this is Ben, this is Ron. We'll uh, talk about ourselves a little more later, but mostly I want to talk to you as we are playing these songs about um, this style of music and its originator. Uh, this all comes from a guy named Django Reinhardt, who um, lived in the 1930s and 40s in Paris, France. Um, he was uh, born into a traveling gypsy family, so he was like in a horse-drawn uh, caravan, like camper, and happened to be born in Belgium, but settled in the, on the outskirts of Paris, kind of the slums outside of the city, and um, as a little 12-year-old was already playing professionally in, in town. Um, the, the gypsies are, they originally originated from northern India and then started migrating eventually all over the world, even to the United States. But in Europe, they kind of have distinct tribes. So Django was a Manouche. In France, they're usually called Manouche. In Holland, they're the Sinti. Um, in Germany, they're Zigerno. And in general, um, I'll just refer to the, uh, those Western European gypsies as gypsies. Um, and the style of music is gypsy jazz. So Django heard Louis Armstrong when when he was a teenager and um, just fell in love with jazz and left the music that he was playing at the time behind and just wanted to be uh, Louis Armstrong. But due to his background and his chosen instrument, the acoustic guitar, um, it really turned into a whole new style or, or branch of jazz. Um, this next tune we're going to play is called Minor Swing. It might be the, the most famous of gypsy jazz songs. And uh, it actually was kind of just a happy accident that, that this was even recorded. They had a little extra studio time and decided to play this tune that they usually just would jam on backstage before a show. Um, and I hear some of you are uh, intro to jazz students. You may recognize that this it doesn't really sound like jazz in certain ways. It definitely doesn't have a jazz chord progression um, or really a jazz melody. It's just, uh, it's really a gypsy folk song played in a, in a jazzy way. So this one's called Minor Swing. Thank you. 
By the way, when you came in, there uh, were some sheets there that say uh, Gypsy Jazz Re Resources, is what it says. <laughs> and I have a few more copies here if you want to get one afterwards. And I just have a couple books if you're interested in the topic. Um, a, a Django biography, a Gypsy Jazz in general book. Uh, a couple films, you can find them on YouTube. And a couple YouTube channels of people who live in uh, one's in France and one's in Holland, and they just have tons of um, you know contemporary performances. You can check out, see what's going on. It's a much uh, it was a very vibrant style, especially in France and the Netherlands, and it's really uh, kind of the folk music of the, these Western European gypsies. Like kids grow up playing the music. It's kind of a lot like bluegrass in North Carolina. You know, everybody maybe has at least heard it maybe dabbles in it, maybe some are professionals, but it's just like the folk music of, of uh, these people. And then there's a list of musicians um, you can check out, going back to Django all the way to uh, contemporary people. So, um, let's see, this next tune we're gonna play, it's called Troublant Bolero. Uh, bolero is a um, Spanish dance form and music and, you know, I just said Django was French, but um, there was a lot of mixing between the gypsies of Spain called the Gitan and, you know, all the ones from all over Europe and especially at this uh, religious um, pilgrimage that they would make once a year to the south of France. There's a little chapel uh, that's very uh, revered among um, the gypsies and they meet up there. Um, for religious services, but then it's really uh, becomes a giant week-long party and a lot of jamming and a lot of musical sharing. So, you know, my guess is maybe Django was at this and heard some Spanish gitan playing um, some boleros and wrote this tune. Oh, I did want to say one other thing, which is that, um, you know, some of these tunes, these are all either written by Django or recorded by him. This is one that he wrote, um, so you could check all of these out. YouTube, what an amazing resource. You can, like, listen to anything just at the tip of your fingers, so, you yeah, know, check out some of these tunes. Um, I forget what I was going to say. Anyway.
Yeah, Django was ahead of his time. He was already playing funk back in the 1930s. <laughs> Let's see, let's talk a little bit about our instruments. Ron here is playing an upright bass, um, which there were, you know, kind of in um, traveling gypsy circles, but pretty rare. You know, imagine if you're, you and your whole family is traveling out of a, a small trailer, basically. That is precious space. Title top. <laughs> yeah, you could. Grandma and uh, the bass can go on top. <laughs> Much more common would be guitars, um, you know, very small and portable. You want to tell them a little bit about this guitar because it's, you know, uh, fairly unique. Sure. So this guitar was, um, this is a copy of a guitar that Django played. Um, an Italian man named Mario McAfee was living in Paris in the 1930s. And he was a classical uh guitarist and had an idea about how to make a louder guitar because at the time it was before amplification so nobody's going to hear you unless your guitar is loud and you're beating on the thing pretty hard so um, he went to the Selmer uh, music company which is an English uh, luthier and he came up with um, more or less this um, idea for a guitar and you know it's got doesn't look like a typical uh, dreadnought American guitar. Um, has some unique features. Um, has this different bridge. Has this tailpiece. Um, obviously, this it looks weird. This is called the petit bouche, the little mouth. Um, but he also, and it doesn't really affect the loudness of the guitar. It's way loud, anyways. Um, and the technique is a big part of the, right. the sound and the loudness. Right. So. Uh, Often gypsy players will play with a large, big, fat guitar pick. So if you're any guitarists out there, this is like a 2.0 2 <laughs> rather than a, like a 0.75 or something, right? And they also use a lot of downstrokes in their playing. So this is the guitar, just totally acoustic. So you can get pretty loud with it for an acoustic guitar. Um, and it has kind of a certain nasally kind of sound. A lot of mid-range that cuts well through the band. So, um, But yeah, you can find these guitars. Um, they're a little bit hard to find, but you can find them on Craigslist and all the big... Um, this is, you know, a Chinese-made instrument and costs about a thousand bucks and nicest guitar I've ever owned. <laughs> and then my guitar is uh, a friend of mine's a luthier and this is his modern interpretation of that guitar, so they have very similar sounds, even though this one looks a lot different. Um, <clears throat> let's see, our next tune is Vous et Moi, and uh, this is, so Gypsy Jazz draws from so many different types of music. This is, uh, this was originally like a French chanson, which just means song. These were like uh, songs that very much revolved around the vocals and you know had told a story and had a verse and a chorus and what also in the United States what would happen is like jazz tunes mostly would be a lot of them were show tunes and just longer songs and uh, they would have these really elaborate verses that would tell a story but the melodies were pretty boring and so it didn't really get good musically until the chorus, and so what jazz musicians would do is just uh, take the best part and play that, and that would be the choruses. Sometimes you would say, like, you know, uh, play a chorus, as in take a solo, comes from that. And this also is just the chorus of this song. It's the best part. <laughs> Oh, and one more thing about instruments, the violin. Probably, you know, the smallest, loudest instrument and very popular all over the world. It's really small. You can take it anywhere, put it in a little case. And uh, so gypsy musicians, even way before Django, were really uh, into the violin and all their types of music. And that carried into uh, gypsy jazz. The classic lineup was Django on lead guitar, his brother on rhythm guitar, 
Then they had to add another rhythm guitarist and upright bass and Stefan Grappelli on the violin. This next one is a, it's called Honeysuckle Rose. It's like an American jazz standard from the 30s by Fats Waller. Um, 
That's a great nickname. Uh, thought about naming my firstborn Fats, but my wife didn't like that idea. Also, my favorite jazz fiddler, his name was Stuff Smith, and which is where we get our, our name from. It was Stuff Smith and his Onyx Club Boys. And uh, Stuff got vetoed also. And the Gypsies have really great nicknames too. Uh, Django actually is a nickname. Uh, his real name was Jean-Pierre, but uh, went by Django, um, which in the Romani language also means I awake. And so it might have been that, or it might have just been sort of like a different way of saying Jean, Django, Jean. But yeah, there's some great nicknames. Um, Val Val, uh, Mowgli, Rocky, uh, Schnookanak. <laughs> so um, yeah, maybe after the show you can give each of us a nickname too. <laughs>
So I got into it a little bit about um, all the different influences on gypsy jazz. You know, the number one influence being American jazz, uh, especially like early jazz like Louis Armstrong is what Django heard and wanted to emulate. But yeah, he gypsy jazz just brings so many other elements into it. Number one, uh, the music that Django was playing um, before he even heard jazz was mostly French musettes, which were these waltzes that um, were really popular, had like giant dance halls. The Moulin Rouge was a famous uh, dance hall where they would dance to these. Um, want to give them a quick example of a musette? Stuff like that is what he was playing. Not jazz in any sense, but that uh, creeps into the music as well. Um, what else have we here? Gypsy folk songs, uh, the chansons like we did before, Vous et moi. Um, and then in more modern gypsy jazz, all kinds of other styles come in too, like more modern American styles like bebop, little funk, little blues. Um, this next one we're going to play, we're going to incorporate one more style and uh, see if you can recognize it.
the um, the other style or song at the beginning? What was it? Uh, Shady Grove. Yes. <laughs> awesome. With the Mali Malian twist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it all kind of you know, big old melting pot of music. It's kind of all the same, even when it's so different. But uh, yeah, Shady Grove, all a dock. Um, not far from here. How far is a uh, toast? <laughs> or Wilkesboro? Deep gap. Deep gap, yeah. Deep gap, 35 minutes. All right. Wilkesboro, 25. Cool. I'm feeling it. Um, let's see. Yeah, we got a few more. Let's see. This next tune is called Viper's Dream. It's one Django recorded but didn't write. And it's a rare blues that uh, Django played. He did play the blues and incorporated, you know, bluesy licks and the blues scale into his playing, but um, it's kind of a, it's almost always uh, just part of something else. And this tune has like all these other parts, but it also has this blues as kind of the main part in the middle. But also the way he plays the blues, it's just very uh, unbluesy. Maybe French people don't get the blues. <laughs> They get the, the bleh. They get the bleh. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'm going to take a second to tune. It's, um, it's for your own good. One time I saw an Indian violinist, um, as in from India, playing Indian classical music on the violin. Um, and he, uh, what, let's see, he, he tuned. He tuned for like 20 minutes, it seemed like. Just ultra precise tuning, I guess. And then he talked for another 20 minutes or so. And then uh, the audience, which was mostly Indian, some guy stood up and you're like, we did not understand anything you said. Can you, uh, can you say it again? Because he had a real thick accent. <laughs> and he was like, OK. And then he just said the exact same thing, uh, but just a little slower. Eventually, he got to playing, and it was like m totally mind blowing.
got one more tune, um, I think, unless Justin tells us we'll do another one. Or, uh... But we are drawing to a close here. Um, I want to thank all of you for being here and being a great audience. Really appreciate it. And thanks so much to Justin Butler for having us here at Caldwell Community College. And don't forget to pick up our, um, one of these flyers if you want to explore the music a little more. We've got some here, there's some outside. Um, also, uh, feel free to come up and ask us some questions if you have any afterwards, or just come say hi. And let's see, what else? Our band, we're called Onyx Club Boys. We're um, based out of Chapel Hill area. You can find us on the internet, onyxclubboys.com, which is also on that flyer. Um, if you're interested in learning some of this music, we even teach online if you want to do that. And for many years, we put on a festival, a Jan the Carborough Django Reinhardt Festival, and brought some of the, the best talent from the United States uh, to the festival. I'm hoping the next one will feature um, Yosho Stefan, who's a German gypsy jazz guitarist who's phenomenal, and uh, that would be worth the drive to Carver of Chapel Hill. So we're going to leave you with uh, one more. It's called Dark Eyes, and this is a Russian gypsy folk song, originally in 3-4, like a waltz, and uh, Django just jazzified it. Again, this is not a jazz progression in any way, um, but I don't know, that guy could have jazzed up one chord and made it sound pretty hip. <laughs> so here we go.